As we welcome you to the FedEx Orange Bowl, the Iowa Hawkeyes from the Big Ten against the ACC champions, the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. First time that these teams have ever played. And welcome, everyone. Dick Stockton along with Charles Davis. And this is a classic matchup of strength versus strength, the dynamic running attack of Georgia Tech against the physical Iowa defense. But the Hawkeyes are going to have to find a solution to what is, in essence, a throwback offense, Charles. It really is. And if you're a fan of option football, you will love tonight. If you're a fan of Oklahoma, Nebraska, <laughs> Texas in the late 70s, excuse me, the late 60s, early 70s, you'll love what you see. And these guys are led by two electric runners, Jonathan Dwyer and Josh Nesbitt. Dwyer is the B-back. He's really the tailback. Two straight seasons, over 1,000 yards, the ACC Player of the Year in 2008. And Josh Nesbitt, he's the quarterback. He's the decision maker, and he's only nine yards away from joining Dwyer in the 1,000-yard club. These guys present a big problem for Iowa's defense, especially their front four, which wants to take care of all inside runs. So Iowa's going to have to do something on offense, and that's where Ricky Stanzi comes in, the junior quarterback, led the Hawkeyes to nine straight wins before he went out with an ankle injury, which required surgery it's still a little bit sore but he's been ready to go for this one and they hope that he can knock the rust off early and really settle in this is a guy who led this team to a perfect start before being injured they're only two losses without him they need Ricky Stanzi to play well all right and right now here's a review of the Hawkeyes season Iowa wins its opener with two blocked field goals. And a dominating defense equals two Big Ten victories. Quarterback Ricky Stanzi shines against Michigan State, but Stanzi's injury leads to Iowa's first loss. With the Big Ten title on the line, Iowa loses to Ohio State, but finishes out the season with a shutout against Minnesota. And here they come, the Iowa Hawkeyes. And Kirk Ferentz in his 11th year and the Big Ten Coach of the Year. And the Iowa fans, and they always support their team, coming from Iowa City and the Midwest. And now you see the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets, and right now a look at the Ramblin' Rex campaign. Johnson leads Georgia Tech's spread option offense. They possess the second-best rush offense in the nation. Quarterback Josh Nesbitt's overtime heroics in the big victory against Wake Forest. And they finish the season as ACC champions with a victory over Clemson. And here they come, led by the Ramblin' Wreck. Here is Georgia Tech, their first outright title in the ACC since 1990. Johnson in his second year, 20 and 6 record, and the ACC Coach of the Year last year and again this season. And coming up, we'll have the coin toss for the 76th FedEx Orange Bowl here from Miami Springs, Florida. This is the coldest Orange Bowl in history as the temperature has dropped to 49 degrees. And right now, ready for the coin toss, here's the public address announcer, John Mangino. Lincoln Mendez and Doctors Hospital Chief Executive Officer, Nelson Lazo. Gentlemen, congratulations to your teams. Tonight, we have the president of the Orange Bowl, Ms. Phyllis Oders, is going to present our coin for the toss. Ms. Oders? All right, gentlemen, the two helmets is heads. The Orange Bowl logo is tails. You're the visitor, Iowa. What is your call? Tails. All right, he's going to call tails. Madam President, do us the honor.
I would call tails. What's that? It is a hands. Here's your play. Georgia Tech, you've won the toss. The first is so loud. All right, Georgia Tech is going to defer. It's your choice. You want to receive. Which goal do you want to defend? All right, turn your backs here. Iowa there. Georgia Tech won the toss and will defer. Iowa will receive. Gentlemen, let's have a great ball game. And we will be back with the kickoff to the 76 FedEx Orange Bowl in just a moment. Iowa, tough, physical, a team from the heartland. Georgia Tech, champions of the ACC, with a punishing ground attack. They meet next in the 76th FedEx Orange Bowl. Got to be laughing in Iowa City in Atlanta where it's 4 and 28 degrees for our coldest Orange Bowl ever at 49 degrees. And right now, let's go down to Laura Oakman, who's with Paul Johnson, the Georgia Tech head coach. Thank you, Dick. Okay, coach, you're introducing your spread offense to a lot of people around the country tonight who haven't seen it. Tell me what you hope they see. Well, I hope they see execution. I hope that, uh, you know, we can execute the offense, keep the ball off the ground and uh, mix it around. Hopefully they'll have a hard time finding the ball. Your seniors, 0-4 in bowl games coming in, Coach. Your number one goal this season wasn't to get to the FedEx Orange Bowl. It was to win it. What do you need to do tonight to make that happen? We just need to play solid football. I think we execute on offense and defense and take care of the ball. Great. Good luck tonight, Coach. Thanks. Dick, back to you. All right, Laura. So, as we know, Georgia Tech won the toss and deferred, so Iowa will get the ball first. And that is Brandon Wager, who is back deep along with Darrell johnson Julianos. As Scott Blair gets set to kick it off. <laughs> 76 FedEx Orange Bowl is underway and Brandon Wager returns for Iowa and brings it out to the 34 yard line. So here is Ricky Stanzi making his first start since the injury on November 7th. Question is how rusty he will be. No game action, plenty of practice time. He says he's 100%, a little bit of soreness in the ankle. He'll get tested early by Georgia Tech. First and 10 from the 34. And the handoff to Adam Robinson, freshman running back. And again, a loss of one on the play. And here is the Merrill Lynch wealth management starting lineup for the Iowa offense. Brian Balaga, Big Ten Offensive Lineman of the Year at left tackle. Dace Richardson returns at right guard. The key for Iowa, where will the big plays come from? Will it be Darrell Johnson Culianos or Marvin McKnight out, front, out wide? Second down and 12. Stanzi with his first pass, and it's caught by Marvin McNutt, who's starting in place of Trey Strauss at wide receiver. And here is the Merrill Lynch wealth management starting lineup for the Georgia Tech defense. And it all starts up front with Derek Morgan, the All-America pass rusher. This defense has had its challenges all year, but on the back end, Morgan Burnett is an all-conference safety, hoping to shore things up for them. Third down and four, just short of the 40-yard line. Stanzi with time, and the pass caught by McNutt loses the ball, and Georgia Tech may have it back. Georgia Tech recovers. Cedric Griffin, the only senior on the starting lineup for Georgia Tech, makes the recovery, and a big break for the Yellow Jackets. This is a Georgia Tech defense that has really struggled in their last two games trying to stop people, but what a great play by Gerard Tarrant. Just punches the ball away from Marvin McNutt after the catch across the middle. Before he can get it tucked away firmly, ball punched out. Great recovery there by Cedric Griffin, number 54, Georgia Tech on offense. 
And a first down on the 47 of Iowa. Josh Nesbitt, the junior quarterback. And on the dive play, and the play is blown dead. Jonathan Dwyer, and a penalty. The referee, Steve Shaw, leading these officials from the Southeastern Conference. Before the snap, full start, number 70 on the offense. Five-yard penalty, remains first down. Penalty on Joseph Gilbert, the right guard. So, Nesbitt, all ACC, and coming into the game, needing only nine yards rushing for 1,000 on the season. First down and 15. Back in Georgia Tech territory. Nesbitt gets to the 48-yard line. And the rest of the Georgia Tech offense, the Merrill Lynch Wealth Management starting group for the Georgia Tech offense. And Austin Barrick starts in left tackle. Phil Smith suffered a broken leg against Clemson. And Barrick, who had the starting job, back in there again. Hoping to spring their run, run, run attack early in the game. Second down and 11. Nesbitt. And Nesbitt gets inside the 45-yard line. He'll be about seven yards shy of the first down. And here is the Merrill Lynch Wealth Management starting lineup for the Iowa defense. They've allowed only 122 yards rushing. And the front seven has started every game. And versus an option attack, your safeties have to be active. Keep an eye on number 30, Brett Greenwood, and number nine, Tyler Sash. Third down and seven. First pass of the game for Nesbitt, and he's going deep for Demarius Thomas. Out of bounds, incomplete, and fourth down coming up. And good coverage, and getting up limping is Sean Prater, the cornerback. Does an excellent job, goes outside and bumps Demarius Thomas and pushes him over the sideline, but that's not good when you're starting corner. On the first pass play of the game, comes up Gippy. So limping off the field, and now it's fourth down, and Chandler Anderson in the punt for Georgia Tech. Colin Sandeman, number 22, back deep for the Hawkeyes. And this is the first punt in 22 possessions for Georgia Tech, and it sails into the end zone for the touchback. Georgia Tech hasn't punted, and no one has really punted against them as they work on Prater on the sideline. No score. Iowa ball when we come back. Charles, right now, let's take a look at tonight's Chevy. May the best car win matchup. For Iowa, it's points per possession. You may not get as many possessions because of the way Georgia Tech controls the football. And for Georgia Tech, time of possession still paramount for them. The only two losses all year, they lost the time of possession battle. They lead the nation in that statistic. Hawkeyes with their second possession of the game, starting from the 20. Brandon Wager is now the running back behind Ricky Stanzi. And the pass is caught by Darrell Johnson Koulianos. And he picks up six yards with Gerard Tarrant making the tackle. Iowa traditionally has been a team that wants to run the football first. And they remain that way. But this year, they haven't been able to run it the same way they have before. Sean Green left after last season, out nearly 1800, over 1,800 yards. Now they have two freshman running backs, Adam Robinson and Brandon Wager. They put more on Ricky Stanzi now than they have in the past with their quarterbacks. Robinson wasn't even on the depth chart when spring practice came about, so it'll be second down and three. And here is Wager, and Wager is stopped about a yard and a half shy of the first down by the middle linebacker Brad Jefferson, who led Tech in tackles this year. This will be an interesting call for Ken O'Keefe, the offensive coordinator for Iowa. Ricky Stanzi has not played since getting hurt in November. 
Do you put the ball in his hands right now, or do you try and put it on that big offensive line and see if they can wedge a hole for a freshman running back? Iowa has been careless with the ball, particularly in the last four games of the season. And they've been kind of fortunate to escape with wins in most of those occasions. So it'll be third down and two. Colin Sandeman is in as a third wide receiver, number 22, in the slot. Stanzi on the run, completes to Darrell Johnson, Julianos, and a first down out to the 37-yard line, a pickup of nine. And if you're a Hawkeye fan, you're encouraged by what you just saw from Ricky Stanzi. Watch him move in the pocket. This is a guy who's coming back off of ankle surgery, does just enough to get outside, presents a nice open throwing lane to Johnson Julianos, who does an excellent job of presenting himself to his quarterback. Led Iowa with 41 receptions, the junior from Campbell, Ohio. And it's a first down at the 37. Play action. Fake to Wager, and the pass to the tight end, Tony Moliaki, picking up big yardage inside the 30, inside the 20, and inside the 10. And it was Mario Edwards, the free safety, who brought him down right about the 10-yard line. A 54-yard gain for Iowa. And Iowa's putting the ball in the hands of their playmakers early. Look at what they do. This is the All-American, Derek Morgan. So with the reverse action, by Ricky Stanzi, they got Morgan to dive inside. That allowed Moyaki to get outside. Now, if you're a receiver for Iowa, you can't just catch passes. You have to block. Look at the escort Moyaki was getting from Sandeman 22 and Johnson Culianos. And it'll be first and goal just inside the 10 for the Hawkeyes. There's Wager. Wager out of bounds inside the five. Close to the three, forced out by Tarrant, and a six-yard pickup. So here is Iowa trying to jump in front of Georgia Tech. You know what I liked about this play? Watch the end of the run. The freshman running back, Wager, watch how he finishes it. Lowers his shoulder and goes into Tarrant, letting him know right away that he's going to be a physical back in this game. Seven touchdowns on the year for Wager, freshman from Dakota Dune, South Dakota. And it'll be second and goal from the three. Down to Kulianos isolated here on the bottom. Handoff is to Wager. Nothing. No gain. As the Georgia Tech defense closes down, Julian Burnett, who's a freshman from Macon. No gain. Bringing up third down and goal. So the first significant play coming up in this orange bowl. That was well played by the defensive front of Georgia Tech. Come under a lot of criticism and fire because of the last two games where teams rolled up 662 rush yards in the last two games against them. That was an encouraging sign. Third and goal, the ball is at the four. Stanzi, Fade, McNutt, Touchdown, Iowa! Marvin McNutt, who caught seven touchdowns during the regular season, the converted quarterback on a touch pass from Stanzi. Well-thrown ball by Ricky Stanzi. Never gave Gerard Tarrant an opportunity to make a play on the football. Gets the one foot down, touchdown. So the underdog Iowa Hawkeyes jump in front, and now Daniel Murray on for the extra point. And Paul Johnson's Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets find themselves trailing. 7-0 on a four-yard touchdown pass from Stanzi to McNutt. Take, take a look at the touchdown. This is Brandon Wager, the running back. Remember how he finished the run being physical? Look what he does with Logan Walls, a defensive tackle versus the blitz of Georgia Tech. Picks it up, allows Ricky Stanzi to step into the throw, and Marvin McNutt with the initial touchdown of the game for Iowa. The Hawkeyes with an impressive 80-yard drive. Seven plays, 
And the key play was the 54 yard pass to Tony Moiaki, and that is a career long for the tight end. So now Daniel Murray will be kicking off, and back deep, Orwin Smith and Embry Peoples for Georgia Tech. It's a short kick, and it's taken by Peoples. And he is knocked back. Forward progress will give him the 31-yard line. And a good play by Don Nordman, a junior from Hopkinton, Iowa. So Josh Nesbitt comes out again, and uh, Iowa really closed down at midfield, forcing the Yellow Jackets to punt last time. Would you say the first punt in 22 possessions? Yes. Georgia Tech not used to it, especially in plus territory. Paul Johnson likes to go for it when the ball moves across the 50-yard line. They mark it at the 29. Keeping it is Nesbitt, and he gets to the 35. A gain of six yards with Adrian Claiborne making the tackle. And there you see Sean Prater, who came up limping on that long pass attempt to Thomas and has been replaced by Micah Hyde, number 18. Micah Hyde is a freshman getting the opportunity. He's moved past Willie Lowe to get this opportunity after Prater. Second down and four. And the pitch to Marcus Wright. And Pat Anger and the rest of the Hawkeyes are there. Carl Klug as well. No gain on the play. And that will bring up third down. And for a report on Prater's injury, we have double barreled coverage on the sideline. Here's Chris Myers. Hey, Dick. And from the sideline here, Sean Prater, it's a left ankle sprain. Now, this week in practice, he was bothered by a sore leg. They wrapped the ankle. They gave him some painkillers. He got up, tried to move around, was still limping noticeably. Right now, questionable. They're trying to get him back in the game. Dick? Thank you, Chris. Third and four. And Nesbitt. Not going to make it. And right now, Georgia Tech's spread offense hasn't gained much. A two-yard pickup bringing up fourth down. The defensive front of Iowa very active early in the game. They're making it difficult for Josh Nesbitt to get to his reads in the option attack. See, they're chasing him down from the backside. Great job by Ballard, number 46, being the first guy into the backfield. Everyone else there to finish it off, and Georgia Tech will go for it early. And they do that often, which is one of the reasons they haven't punted so much. Fourth down and one. And Nesbitt calls a timeout, and I wonder whether they were trying to get Iowa to jump off sides that far deep into Georgia Tech territory. That's exactly right, because Paul Johnson went to that motion, and then he called the timeout from the sideline when Iowa didn't jump. Fourth and one early in the game, and Georgia Tech comes out, and they have a reputation for going for it. Look at the motion that they show. They go back and show a wishbone, and then Paul Johnson, their head coach, sees that Iowa doesn't jump, calls the timeout from his own territory. I think they'll line up and punt the football now. Early advantage to Iowa. Two straight stops of Georgia Tech, and they got him to call an early timeout. And as you see, Georgia Tech, the fewest punts this season at 31, and now not taking any chances is Paul Johnson. He sends Chandler Anderson, his punter, on the field, and Colin Sandeman is back deep. And Sandeman calling for the fair catch in the market at the 17-yard line. So far, advantage Iowa on the scoreboard and on both sides of the ball. Tonight's aerial coverage is brought to you by Bud Light. Look at the skyline of Miami. Temperature dipping below 50, the coldest FedEx Orange Bowl ever. And a lot of tradition for this game. This is the 76th in history, and the Iowa Hawkeyes We'll start from the 17. Stanzi is perfect six for six throwing thus far. Play action. Stanzi's pass and flag goes down and if it's off the hands of Allen Reisner, 
the second tight end and our first penalty, second penalty of the game. They occupied the All-American tight end, uh, All-American defense been Derek Morgan. They tried to occupy him, but he learned from the last time when they got the big play to Tony Moyaki. He responded very well and put the pressure on Ricky Stanzi. And holding against Derek Morgan. Let's take a look at the All-American defensive end as he works against Moyaki, the tight end. Got his hands on him before he released him out. Ended up throwing a flag on him, said he had too much jersey as he tried to get out in his route. So everything is going the Hawkeyes' way. They'll have a first down at the 27. Adam Robinson, who started the game in running back, is the tailback there and carries. And Adam Robinson picks up about five yards. Redshirt freshman from Des Moines, stopped by Anthony Abunaway, the defensive end, and six yards on first down. Early in this game, we're seeing the offensive identity for Iowa come to the fore. Ricky Stanzi, his strength, throwing the football off of play action. In order to have play action, he must be able to run the football effectively enough to occupy the defense and make them think that there's always going to be a running play when you stick it into the running back's belly. Early in the game, working very well for Iowa. And still six for six. That incompletion followed by a penalty. And here's Robinson, Adam Robinson to the 45 and gets close to midfield, a big gain. Mario Butler brings him down, a 15-yard pickup by Adam Robinson, who set an Iowa freshman record with 775 yards this year. And look at the left side of the line, and look at what the, put, the surge they get. Ryan Bulaga, the All-American offensive tackle. He seals it there. Allen Reisner, the tight end, 82. They create the crease. They get Adam Robinson deep into the third level in the secondary. So it's Iowa that's made the big plays offensively thus far, and a first down at the 48. Stanzi with a lot of time and going deep for Johnson Pulianos. And he makes the catch and out of bounds at around the 20. 26 yards and great protection for Ricky Stanzi. This time they don't even go to play action. They go to straight drop back. Why? Because of these guys up front. Look at what they give Ricky Stanzi in terms of time. Able to step into the throw, no pressure at all. That allowed Darrell Johnson Pulianos to run a double move, a post corner, gets to the sideline, and the big shot downfield pays off for Iowa. And they call it a 31-yard play officially. And remember, Iowa is shuffling their offensive linemen, moving them around almost every play as Prater walks off. And there's a pass to Sandeman, who makes the catch. Touchdown, Iowa! yards on that play and the Hawkeyes are picking up yards big chunks at a time thus far. Remember what I was saying about their offensive identity? They want to run the football. They want to throw off a play action. The third part is take your shots downfield when available. They got two of them on this drive. Johnson Culianos and then the next play to Sandeman for the touchdown. Daniel Murray makes it 14 to nothing in favor of Iowa. So two touchdown passes by Ricky Stancy. This is Sandeman right here running the route against Tarrant. The second time tonight, Tarrant's been in coverage. Perfectly thrown football. Sandeman with a nice catch. Tarrant unable to get his head around and make a play on the football. Both touchdowns over him early tonight for Iowa. Rusty? <laughs> Hardly. And Stancy, eight for eight, 141 yards and two touchdowns. And with 4.04 remaining in the first quarter, it's the Hawkeyes jumping all over Georgia Tech. Well, they've been able to get the Georgia Tech defense off balance. They've been able to run the ball effectively. Then they come back with the play action. The offensive line, when they decide to throw drop back passes, have given Ricky Stanzi all the time he's needed. And as you mentioned, forget the rust. Ricky Stanzi loves coming back to play football for Iowa. Told you this is the first meeting between these teams as you look at the scoring drive. 
and only the second time in history that the ACC has faced the Big Ten in the Orange Bowl. You got to go back to 2006 when Penn State beat Florida State in an exciting three overtime game, 26 to 23. Now it's still early. Everyone's going to look at the scoreboard and say, hey, does Georgia Tech change their offensive identity? Not at all. We're in the first quarter. 14 points down. Georgia Tech, they have enough confidence in their offense that they believe they'll get it cranked up soon. Murray will kick off, and Peoples and Smith back for Georgia Tech, and it's Orwin Smith on the return. And Smith brings it back to the 33-yard line. First down, and Nesbitt goes nowhere, and lucky to perhaps pick up a yard, and it's Pat Anger. 135 tackles. Senior from Bettendorf, Iowa, all Big Ten. Look at what they're doing up front. It's the defensive front for Iowa. They are just manhandling Georgia Tech up front, and that's allowed Angler to run to the football without anyone blocking him. That's exactly what they want. Keep their linebackers free, let them run to the football, and make the tackles. Only 18 total yards for Georgia Tech thus far. Second down and nine, and Nesbitt will keep it. And Nesbitt will get to the... 41-yard line, and a penalty flag is down. Chop block, number 70 on the offense. 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. That's the second penalty of the night for Joseph Gilbert, the right guard. And I'm not surprised that this call came early. Watch in the middle of the, middle of the play here, right? As he goes down, the reason it's called is that this guy was occupied by another blocker. And then if you go at his legs when he's already occupied, that's where the penalty is. You can chop but he can't be occupied by another blocker. Second down and now 22, and now they give it to Jonathan Dwyer, and he is knocked back. Anger leading the way, and Jonathan Dwyer with his first carry of the game, coming in with 1,346 yards. And as I said, I wasn't surprised by the chop block call early. You know why? I guarantee the Iowa coaches talked to the officials and said, you, this is a team that's known for chop blocking. Make sure you keep an eye on them. On this play, Dwyer trying to run the, trying to run the draw. Pat Anger, again, not blocked, stays right in the hole and makes the tackle. Paul Johnson said his biggest fear to be manhandled by the inside, and that's what happened so far in this one. Third down and 22. Here's Nesbitt. In trouble, and down he goes. And it's Adrian Claiborne, who has delighted all Iowa fans by announcing that he will be returning. And the junior from St. Louis, and the first sack of the game for the Hawkeyes in a loss of three, bringing up fourth and very long. Take a look at this from our DirecTV Ultimate Picture Cam. Josh Nesbitt in the pocket. Here comes the pressure. All right, from the outside, that's Claiborne, 95, Klug, uh, 94, Klug, 95. And what they did especially well, they kept Josh Nesbitt in the pocket, didn't allow him to flush and run, which is much more of a strength for him than dropping back and throwing it. So far, it's been a textbook game for the Hawkeyes and Chandler Anderson from inside his 10. And Sandeman is going to let the ball drop and will take a Georgia Tech roll to the 34. It's 14-0 Iowa. We'll be back to the 76 FedEx Orange Bowl in just a moment. It'll be first down for Iowa on the 33. Hand off to Brandon Wager. And Wager brings it out to the 36, where Julian Burnett making the tackle. Three-yard pickup for Wager. This is the time now Georgia Tech on the first defensive series of the game forced a turnover. 
Now they've got to rise up again. They've got to at least get a three and out and get the ball back for their offense. They can't allow Iowa to drive the ball down the field and put it in the end zone again because that's severely going to test the comeback abilities of their option offense. Second down and seven. Stanzi's pass, and it's intercepted. Intercepted by Gerard Tarrant, and he'll go in for the touchdown. And that has been Iowa's concern with Ricky Stanzi. And you can see their fans subdued now. And the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets are back in the game. A 40-yard interception return by Tarrant. And what a half of football it's been for Gerard Tarrant. He forced a fumble on the first defensive series that his team recovered. He got beat for two touchdown passes. Now he gets a pick six to put, the, put Georgia Tech on the scoreboard. Scott Blair with the extra point. So Ricky Stancy, who had not thrown an incomplete pass, throws a pick, returned for the touchdown, and it's 14 to seven. Look at Taron here, working on Johnson Koulianos, reads the quarterback's eyes, and what he did, he did what they call cluing. He clued all the way back to the quarterback, saw the break of the wide receiver's route, and as soon as he did it, he put his foot in the ground, drove towards the football, and takes it away, and takes it in for six. A true roller coaster half for Gerard Tarrant, who has figured in every non-offensive touchdown for Georgia Tech all this season. He's had two punt returns for touchdowns, a fumble return for a touchdown, and now this interception for a touchdown in the Orange Bowl. So Tech's defense, which has been maligned, coming up with a big play there. They forced two turnovers, and Ricky Stanzi, who had 15 touchdown passes and 14 interceptions, almost even coming into this game. Now he has thrown for two scores and one pick. It's almost like Pete Maravich playing basketball, Dick. Remember, he used to average about 44 points a game in college. He might give up about 42. At least you came out plus two. Ricky Stanzi, plus one right now with two touchdown passes versus the interception given up for a touchdown. 24 seconds remain in the first quarter, and Paul Johnson, Yellow Jackets back in it. Scott Blair will be kicking off. And who would have thought they'd be back in it at the hands of their defense? Darrell Johnson Pulianos running room up the middle. Not only the defense had been a problem for Georgia Tech, but the kicking game as well, which concerned Paul Johnson. And of all the endings of all the BCS games on Fox, none was more perfect than this. A last gas for the Broncos. Down the middle, James, the lateral! To the corner of the end zone! Can you believe that? Boise State for the win. They hand it off to Johnson. Boise State has won the Tostinos. And that was the Reese's perfect ending. And now, I was looking for a more perfect offensive sequence here as Stancy's pass is caught by Johnson Koulianos. So here's Ricky Stancy with 10 seconds to go in the first quarter. None of his passes have hit the ground. He has completed 9 of 10. Of course, the one that was not caught by a Hawkeye, an interception by Tech. But how about Ricky Stanzi coming right back after throwing the pick six? How about Ken O'Keefe, his offensive coordinator, putting the ball right back in his hands and letting him throw it? And who did they throw that one against? Gerard Tarrant. That's the end of the first quarter. Iowa 14, Georgia Tech 7. These great overhead shots are brought to you by the DirecTV Ultimate Picture Cam. If you call yourself a sports fan, you've got to get DirecTV. Really good place on the field. If Iowa wants to take a shot down, that downfield against the secondary, it's a good spot on first and 10. On the 47 of Georgia Tech, start of the second quarter, and the handoff to Adam Robinson, and Robinson stopped by Derek Morgan after picking up three yards on first down. Dick Stockton along with Charles Davis. Laura Oakman and Chris Myers here at the FedEx Orange Bowl. 
Iowa scored the first 14 points on a couple of touchdown passes by Ricky Stanzi, and then an interception by Gerard Tarrant. 40-yard run got Georgia Tech back in the game, but the total yards, no one expected that at this point. And the bulk of it through the air for Iowa. 157 thus far. Second down and seven. Here's Robinson, off left tackle, good game. Trying to drive to the first down and knock back. The forward progress will be the 39. So he'll get five yards with Isaiah Cross and Mario Butler combining to make the play for Georgia Tech. That's Iowa football right there. That's what they're, that's what they're used to seeing. The big guys bringing it up front. You've got a lead fullback in number 36, Brett Morris. Look at the, look at the hole, Morris leading. Look at him working. There's Tony Moyaki, number 81. Doing a nice job turning out on the block against Cedric Giffen. You got to remember as you look at Moyaki, valuable tight end is that you're not looking at the running backs that Iowa figured on this year. The couple of freshmen won a red shirt, and they performed superbly. Third down and two. Here's Stancy getting a rush. And a flag is down. It came from the back judge. It's often play clock is an issue. And a delay of the game call. You're right, Charles.